Hi, Deep Water Swimmers. Five Minute Friday. Here's your word dive for the day. Ready? Okay. False prophets. How about that? False prophets. In the time that we're living now, uh, there's two reasons that we should be aware of the meaning behind that term. One of those is to better equip us to avoid the traps laid by false prophets of our time. And the second is to be aware of the predictions about the false prophet of Revelation. Okay, a false prophet is one who falsely claims authority for proclaiming and interpreting God's will and who claims to speak to God and who makes such claims for evil ends evil ends. In the Old Testament, false prophecy meant using signs and wonders to draw people away from the worship of the true God. Basically, it is anyone who, without having it, claims a special connection to God and sets him or herself up as a source of spirituality, as an authority preacher or teacher, without having the connection to God, but claiming it. In the book of Acts, the apostles Paul and Barnabas encountered a false prophet named uh, Elymas Bar-Jesus on the island of Cyprus. How did they handle it? Well, then it says, But Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making making crooked the straight paths of the Lord. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind and unable to see the sun for a time. And immediately, mist and darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand. Yeah. You can read that entire story in Acts 13, 6 through 12. Second Peter 2, 1 through 3 says this. But false prophets also arose among the people. But just as there will be false teachers among you, you will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their licentiousness, and because of them, the way of truth will be reviled. So we see that now, don't we? And it goes on to say, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. And we see that. And from of old, their condemnation has not been idle and their destruction has not been asleep. That's 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. John warns those of the Christian faith to test every spirit because of the false prophets. And he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Okay? But test the spirits to see whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit which confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. But every spirit which does not confess Jesus is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist of which you heard that it was coming. And now it is in the world already. 1 John 4, 1-3. through 3, Okay? Now... The most well-known New Testament false prophet is the one mentioned in the book of Revelation. The false prophet is ultimately cast in the fiery lake with burning sulfur. Okay? And it says, And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, who in its presence had worked the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. So how does God handle false prophets? Revelation 19, 20. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And Revelation 20, verse 10 says, this is another mention of the false prophet in the New Testament, is the Antichrist spirit which denies the Son. Okay? So the big question is, how can you determine if someone is for real or a false prophet? The primary distinction is that a prophet is required to demonstrate God's law through his actions, character, 
and behavior without necessarily calling people to follow him, okay? A true prophet will declare and not deny both the deity and the humanity of Christ. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. In latter times, I believe that's now. 2 Peter 2, 1. But there were also false prophets among the people. Even as there will be false teachers among you, you will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and brought on themselves swift destruction. We talked about that before. Now, to sum it up, false prophets may make predictions that do not come true. They may perform signs and wonders. They may claim to be Christ. They may have an unbiblical lifestyle, and you know what that is. They may deny Christ's identity, and their teaching may lead people away from the Lord. Okay? There are many false prophets that seem to be flourishing today. There are. You need to avoid them. And you need to warn your friends and family if you see one of these evil creatures at work. That's your five minute Friday word dive for today. And we'll be back to see you again on Sunday. Thanks everybody.